In terms of monstrous cavalry, cold ones sit in a little bit of an interesting place between something like a boar rider that still has your standard 45 model count and something like demigriff knights that has a much lesser model count. Coming in at 36 unit models, they still have a pretty good amount of punching power, weapon strength, great armor piercing, anti-large for the cost. This is uh, myself versus Falcon, by the way. I'm playing Nagarith versus Harganeth, so we've got only the most stylish elves in black and gold here. Yeah, he's got this one unit of Cold One Knights, a Medusa Hellebron on foot with a Death Hag. Also has a Supreme Dark Sorceress, a Blades of the Blood Queen, Spear Spears, Sisters of Singing Doom, and some Spear Crossbows as well. A few Dark Riders scattered around. For myself, I've got an Archmage of Life up on an Eagle. I've also got an Arcane Phoenix here. A couple Dragon Princes, three Illyrian Reavers. Uh, two archers, two Lothran Seaguard, and three spearmen up in front with the bolt thrower. So, yeah, uh, the armor piercing anti large could potentially be a little bit of an issue against my dragon princes if they get a good engagement. Although, the one downside of Cold One Knights is their HP pool is pretty small. They can take a lot of damage quite easily despite the fact they have 90 armor, which is pretty solid. This is block chance as well 35%. Only 26 melee defense, though, is really not amazing. And uh, yeah, their HP pool is quite low as well, so gotta be careful, Felcon does, of not taking lots of shock damage like Dragon Princes on the charge. With their 80 charge bonus, we'll just wall up those poor Cold One Knights. So if the Cold One Knights can like get a side of rear charge, it'll be pretty cost effective for them, but regardless, uh, right now I'm just kind of maneuvering my archers to counter his uh, repeater crossbows here as much as I can, although I am going to switch over onto the Medusa as she is a bit more of a high value target. Although, objectively, probably less threatening. Um, yeah, kind of wheeling my Dragon Princes over. I see this couple elite infantry here. We've got uh, Sisters of Singing Doom and the Blades of the Blood Queen pushing up through that for us. So I want to potentially counter their advance, try and block them up here with the Dragon Princes, do some damage. Likewise, Blade Wind being cast in here by Felcon. I forgot how much damage that did against low armor targets. Actually does some really nice damage against Lowe's Lothurn Seaguard. Helping to kind of counteract my archers a little bit. Uh, yeah, so far... So good uh, from my perspective, but uh, we're starting to kind of take some losses. Hellebron and the Witch Elf, the Death Hag rather, get in here. They're going to start to blend through some of my Spearmen. I've also got Lothran Seaguard a little bit too close there. Uh, we did finish off the Medusa, not quite yet, but we're going to shortly. Phoenix dies over here. I actually meant to just fly over and poop, um, but instead it dived in, which is not ideal. But we're going to throw a heal on these Dragon Princes, get the other ones charging in there. Not a great engagement for me, I really should disengage my troops, but because the Dragon Princes are over there, there's nothing to deal with these Cold One Knights. I'm going to throw my Reavers into combat against the Dark Riders, and also, yeah, I thought I was maybe going to get a charge on those <laughs> Cold One Knights, but it looks like I had a different attack order. But yeah, just the Dark Riders, you know, crossbows, and in melee, just clearing out my uh, Lyrian Reavers quite easily. And now the Cold One Knights, basically unopposed, can come through and just wreck my entire... Uh, remnants of my back line here. Murderous Prowess kicks off. You can see uh, the Phoenix a little bit caught up in this engagement over here. I'm also changed my tar archer targeting over here since we dealt with the Medusa, but in hindsight probably should be dealing with these repeater crossbows. Um, but yeah, with the charge bonus, you can see an extra charge bonus up to 55. Uh, cold ones, they're not necessarily shock cavalry. They're kind of to a degree melee cavalry, even though they are armed with lances. Most lance cavalry you could consider shock cavalry. I mean, they do have a good charge bonus, and certainly you want them cycle charging as much as possible. But they're not in the, you know, at least without <laughs> murderous prowess, they're not in the realm of something like, you know, Knights of the Realm, or in that 60-plus charge bonus range. With murderous prowess, I mean, obviously 55 is quite good. Just getting a rear charge in here, again, taking very little damage, even from the Lothard Sea Guard. Although they did take some. Nice little blood mist over here to juice up these units, trying to finish off those Dragon Princes. I basically failed completely to extricate them from that fight, but... Hey, at least we can finish off the Medusa here with the uh, Archmage on the Eagle. He drops down there. I've still got a handful of Spears holding out, but most of my forces have fallen apart at this point. We've got a few Dragon Princes, gonna pop regrowth on them. But, uh, yeah, those Cold One Knights, man, just literally unopposed over on that flank, and because of them... Dark Riders won decisively enough that they also were here, like, mopping up in this late game as well. So, in hindsight, Falcon and I, you know, were in chat during this game, and in hindsight, for myself, definitely a different lore of magic would have been better. This life mage really didn't do a lot. 
I mean, healing the Dragon Princes is all well and good, but at the end of the day, that can only really do so much because the Dragon Princes can only really do so much. Phoenix has self-healing, so, you know, I could have gone with Lore of Fire to help Phoenix out in terms of Kindle Flame procs and, you know, just deal some damage as well. Also, Lore of Metal might not have been a bad idea because I was kind of going with a cavalry focus build. Um, you know, potentially going up against enemy cavalry, having Final Transmutation and Searing Doom both is great for supporting cav engagements. And then, you know, Searing Doom against Elite Halberds. Final Transmutation also would have helped against the single entities, which, by the way, Crone Hellebron and her which you know, kind of hero squad are completely untouched here. They're just gonna shred my poor Archmage in melee. As she dives down for her final stand, Crone Hellebron just running around with her murderous mastery, like 90 something melee defend or melee attack, 78 melee attack, just baseline. Insanely strong in terms of damage output. She's very squishy, low HP, and only 15 armor, but. I mean, defensive stats are not the worst besides that. Um, maybe there's something to that. I mean, I have famously, one of my most viewed videos from back in the day is uh, Grimgore actually losing to Crone Hellebron when she was new. And she, I took her on foot. And she's a pretty scary character on foot, to be honest. Like, I'm surprised you don't see her more as a kind of cheap foot buff lord option. But yeah, definitely got some good value here. Cold One Knights definitely paid for themselves, plus, you know, a third. <laughs> Just running rampant in my back line, completely unopposed there. Uh, the Reavers definitely failed miserably in the holding up that flank at all. The Dragon Princes, one of them actually did pay for themselves against that elite infantry ball, but I uh, just yeah, failed to micro them correctly at all. I mean, I did a little bit, don't, don't get me wrong. There was something there, but uh, Phoenix, likewise, did manage to get some value at the end of the day, but definitely could have played better with it. The well, Archmage was just kind of here. The Archer's actually a pretty bright spot. I'm definitely happy with them. And I'm almost thinking for infantry composition as well. Maybe it would be better to just drop these spheres go with more archers and Lothar and Seaguard and just not take any infantry at all. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. For Falcon, though, uh, yeah, Sorceress, really nice with the Blade Winds. have to remember to bring that spell against certain low armor factions, especially, like, if you're not taking a caster where you need Soul Stealer, for example, like a non-legendary caster. No, yeah, or a lord level caster even, whereas with healing your lord obviously quite strong, you definitely want to use the soul stealers there. But uh, with the generic caster, hero level caster here, those blade winds, definitely something to that. Maybe I need to check that out for myself again. Blades of Blood Queen got some really nice value. The Dark Riders as well, kind of enabled by the Cold One Knights, got great value. Uh, Repeater Crossbows also... Contributing the Medusa, I mean, who's surprised, doesn't do a lot, but <laughs> just kind of here. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Cold One Knights, in terms of comparison to other similarly costed cavalry, their weapon strength is pretty good, but the, again, the HP pool is really the thing that you look at and say, okay. Um, in terms of other armor piercing anti large cav with like kind of not amazing melee stats, the biggest one I immediately think of is Boar Boy Biggins. 950 points for these guys, armor-piercing anti-large, again, less unit models are on the uh, Cold One Knights, but higher weapon strength, um, higher charge, actually, on the Boar Boy Biggins, but their melee stats are kind of uh, comparable, comparably low, even lower for the Boar Boy Biggins, although they do get greater magnitude of buffs, I don't know, I'm, I mean... Murderous Prowess and Wall are, are pretty close to equal, I would say. Um, but the Warboy Biggins, I mean, you have, like, Warzag, obviously, it's some of their options for some melee attack buffs, so... Maybe slightly more potential there. They are slightly slower, low, lower leadership, but look at that difference in HP pool. <clears throat> Biggest thing to come back to. 1,440 extra HP for the Warboy Biggins, and they're 50 cost cheaper, right? And if you math it out per model, I don't know exactly. I'd have to sit down and think about it a little bit, but... Probably pretty close to the same HP per model, honestly, at the end of the day. Um, for only nine more unit models, yeah. <laughs> so, that's just something to consider. I mean, even you look at something like a non-armor-piercing, anti-large cavalry and a similar cost from Bretonia, who, again, is supposed to have really good cavalry, so maybe it's not the fairest comparison. But, uh, Knights of the Realm... 68 charge, definitely more charge oriented, but even they have more HP, 540 more HP than the Cold One Knights. So that's the biggest thing to look at when you think about using Cold One Knights is despite the fact they have 90 armor, they really should be thought of as kind of glass cannon units. Um, I'm curious, even with the other Cold One cavalry, obviously, you'd compare them to 
is the Lizardmen. <clears throat> so Cold One Spear Riders are almost the same unit. <laughs> uh, if I can find them here. 1,000 points, anti-large AP, missile block chance, literally almost the same. Um, the Cold One Knights just have a slightly higher charge bonus. Yeah, 44 charge bonus is decent, whereas the Cold One Spear Riders have uh, just higher weapon strength. And yeah, Cold One Knights also have a little bit more melee attack. But again, even like the same unit practically, still Cold One Knights have 360 less HP. So... In terms of units in this class, they might have the lowest HP of any unit of kind of like mid-tier, like shock slash anti-large cavalry. Just really very poor. And as a result, like spirit leeches, even like like low-tier missile units, which you might not think would do a lot of damage, because 90 armor is pretty good, but it's still you'll still take some damage. And uh, that low HP pool means that damage you do take is quite impactful, right? So just something to consider. Use Cold One Knights carefully. But if you do use, use them correctly, they can be absolutely devastating. So hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this. If you like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.